Hey guys, Ed Bud here. I'd like to welcome all the web wanderers, YouTube users, and those cyber runners. I'm back with a long run review today of the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite 2. Thanks for joining me today, cats and kittens. It's much appreciated as always. If you're one of the 20,000 that's clicked that subscribe button, then I take my hat off to you, virtually. It really does help support the channel as well if you give this video a thumbs up like. It lifts us up the charts like some sort of stock acre and waterman act. Let's get to the shoot. So today's run was 13.1 miles, that half marathon distance, 21 odd kilometers, roughly seven minutes, 35 seconds per mile today, which is about four minutes, 42 per kilometer, if you like that kind of thing, and I do. Did take to the regular route on my long run today, You've seen it before in the long run reviews. The first six or so miles I took it nice and steady, like a cart horse, just making steady progress up the hill. Then I threw in some faster paced miles, about four of those in the second half of the run, just to vary things up a little bit. Something like the old pick and mix aisle in Woolworths. Do you remember that? Maybe not if you live somewhere else other than the UK. Weather was variable today. It's like someone got the tone control and kind of went like this with it and then laughed at me as the weather changed from some high up position, like an observer or something. I think the weather is about as variable as a very old capacitor in an 80s computer. They tend to become very variable and leak and do all sorts of terrible things. That's what it was like. You had some rain, you had some wind, and you had these big walls of moisture everywhere. I think within about half a mile I was rather saturated. I mean, some people may enjoy that, some people may curse it. Either way, that's what we had. 337 feet of elevation gain, about 100 meters. It's mainly across the first section of the route, actually. It's just all uphill. I kind of like that, because you know, once you get the halfway, it's plain sailing. Well, it's not plain sailing, it's still an awful amount of effort required, but you know what I mean, you catch my drift. It's actually really strange on today's run, I don't know if you get this as well guys, you sit out there and within no time you've hit about an hour, and then you get to about an hour and a half and you're just wondering where the time's gone, where have the miles gone? It's really strange. It's like some weird time-space continuum ripple, or a crease. So that gives me 50 miles for the week, Nice to be maintaining that, and as you can see, I'm very consistent. I do hope my second COVID jab tomorrow morning doesn't throw me a curveball. I've got a race at the end of the week, and I hope it doesn't mess me up too much. Either way, I'm really glad to have it. Last time it was very much shaking and sort of juddering, a bit like a slightly more negative version of the Jerry Lee Lewis song, a whole lot of shaking going on. But I'm lucky to have that experience, it's a good thing. It shows that it's doing the trick. So how did the shoes hold up in those testing conditions? Not bad. So upper wise, the Felt Fest homage to Prince, or the artist formerly known as Prince, felt great despite being quite saturated early on. Wasn't uncomfortable by any stretch on my feet. The lacing and the lockdown stayed spot on throughout the whole run. No weird sort of shifting of the upper, anything like that. They just felt glove-like really. Very similar actually to the Rebel 2. I like the kind of cinch up the laces, tie them up and go sort of feature of both of those shoes. It's a bit like Windows 95, you know, it's plug and play. These are tie and run. Maybe you could use that New Balance. If you do, please contact me and I'll, uh, we can arrange something. Certainly the sizing with these is on the shorter end of the spectrum. I wouldn't say they're anywhere near as short as the Rebel V2. I think there's a little bit more room there than in the RC Elite version one as well. Even with a medium thickness Nike racing sock today, I had enough room, the toes could move around, and you want that over a longer run. If you're going up to a marathon, you know, having a shoe that's already a little bit too tight, it's gonna cause you problems. I'm all about longevity. I'm all about getting the miles in on a consistent weekly basis, and any shoe that's gonna stop me from doing that is gonna have to be a... Yeah, one of those. I have to say, when I got in, I was a little bit sad because they were completely covered in grit and grime and stuff, but they brushed down really well. I managed to get almost all of it off and they look practically brand new. Well, not that good, but they look all right. I mean, they were involved in a darn good grime grinding session today and yeah, they've held up okay. I haven't had to like wash them with washing up liquid or anything like that, like some people do. I mean, they're shoes, they're designed to 
protect your feet, they're gonna get a bit dirty from time to time. The only one slight issue is in this carbon bunker here, but I'll get to that later. The cushion here left me confused as to whether I was wearing the RC Elite 2 or the Rebel 2 on a few occasions. Certainly at those easier paces anyway. Though I feel that this one elevates above the Rebel 2 when you start going up through the gears and pushing the pace harder. The plate becomes vastly more apparent then and I was happy to hit something close to those half marathon target goal paces that I've got without a huge amount of effort. Just edging into threshold sort of effort there. And yeah, they were feeling good. It didn't feel like I was having to work way, way harder to get to those paces, so yeah. certainly from a midsole perspective anyway. Got to consider getting to threshold effort on some of those later miles today. It was going to be no easy task, especially at the end of a long and gruelling week. The old Ed Bud legs were tired, but happy. They were content. The fuel cell foam here is certainly forgiving and quite bouncy, but I would say that the shoes in a very soggy, heavy, rainy conditions today did soak up quite a lot of that moisture. It did feel a little bit like I had sponges underfoot for one or two of the miles. There's a fair amount of moisture got in under the insoles within the RC Elite 2. It's just sort of sloshing around there. I felt a little bit like how you might feel if you were crushing grapes under your feet. Don't worry though guys, I didn't drink any of the contents of the shoe. So quite extreme conditions to test this one out and that's really what I wanted after my initial review. A few people were a bit upset about the score that I gave the outsole of the shoe. I mean, I really like the upper and the midsole, but the outsole left a little bit to be desired. I wanted to get some more miles in quickly to give you an update on that. But certainly in terms of the upper and the midsole, my run today really does provide extra ammunition towards what I was saying in my initial review. So I'm going to issue a slight outsole apology at this stage. Today, in some very wet conditions, the RC Elite outsole did okay. I'm still not massively impressed with it, but it was serviceable today. Puddles, standing water everywhere, lots of grit and grime, and it still, to me, really does lack some grip and grab on toe-off. It's less of a McCoy's salt and vinegar grab bag, more an easily crushed what's it. A little better today than on my initial outings where I actually did fall over, but I'm still not convinced on very wet surfaces. So yeah, it's always going to be a bit of a downer with this shoe. I got to say on those third and fourth faster miles, I was tentatively running rather than putting everything into it. I was just a little worried for my footing. So somewhere around about seven minutes per mile, four minutes, 21 seconds per kilometre. I just felt I had to ease back a little bit. I was running with the handbrake on. That's what Arsene Wenger would say. Debris is also an issue with this carbon bunker here. I had an interesting selection of dirt, grime and catkins. Cylindrical flower clusters there, very prevalent on my local route. They're a wind pollinated unisexual flower. They seem to be magnetized to this carbon section here and they needed a darn good bit of elbow grease to get rid of them. Aside from that, the shoe's not looking too bad really, closing on 40 miles of use thus far. No real wear anywhere at all, that I can see, with my eyes anyway. If I got the microscope out, I'm sure I could see something. I've noticed there's lots of people doing durometer tests here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna test it now, ready. It's pretty soft, I'm just kidding. I think durometer tests are very useful. I think those doing them though could perhaps add the figures together. So you get like this overall softness score. I think that'd be good. An OSS, there you go. Super shoes are always supposed to be very delicate, I'm told, constantly by people. I wouldn't use them unless I was gonna race in them because they just fall to bits. Well, I just don't find that to be the case. I think they take quite a beating, really, and they just function just fine. They really are improving. I think maybe that's something to do with the foam. I know a lot of people bought the initial 4%, didn't they? And it just wore away in the heel and certain other parts of the shoe, but I don't find it on the more modern super shoes. Yes, I'm a very slight man with an insect-like frame, but I think for these to survive gravel and grit and get loads of moisture sort of all over them and still to function properly, I think that's a very positive thing. And it helps really in terms of value. If you can use them on a more daily, frequent basis, then that's gotta be a good thing, right? You get the benefits of that forgiving foam and it holds up over time. You can still use them for racing. I think it's a testament to the design and the build quality of the RC Elite 2, still looking pretty good and feeling good too. So the purple propulsion slippers did deliver today, an almost Cinderella-like performance. Have you been enjoying the RC Elite 2? Let me know your thoughts and feelings on them in the comments below. A quick musical interlude for you. <laughs> 
You guys and I have been watching the series Loki over on the Disney Channel recently. I think we're about three episodes in now and I'm really enjoying it. But some of the music and the looks and designs of the sets really remind me of this Arctic Monkeys album, the Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. I've also been watching the Arctic Monkeys on the Glastonbury coverage. It's like old coverage back from 2013. Really reminds you how good the band are, just how many different types of songs they've got. They sort of cross through different genres. You can hear bands like Television in some of the guitar playing. There's a quite sinister edge to some of the Arctic Monkeys songs as well. What I really love though is the lyrics. Alex Turner just produces some fantastic songs, quite thought-provoking, and they're always very clever as well, very witty. The band are really on form on that performance. If you've got access to the BBC iPlayer, I do recommend you go and check that out. The 2013 performance from Glastonbury from the Arctic Monkeys. Okay, thanks for joining us today, guys, and sticking with me to the very end of the video. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I launch those new videos for you. Really does help the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.